morning, everybody. Today I have the pleasure of introducing your chapel speaker. Please give a warm welcome to Darren Person. What's going on, Emmanuel? Come on, Emmanuel, make some noise. Come on, I'm looking, I'm looking for the sleepers today. Any sleepers out there? Who slept on me last time? Where Jeffrey's at? Where he at? You, gonna see, you stand away <laughs> this time, my man. God bless you, man. It's good to be here. It's always good to be here. I absolutely love Emmanuel. I think I've spoken here about six times or so forth. My name is Darren Person. You, you probably recognize, uh, recognize the last name because obviously my kids uh, have been here. Darren Person Jr. used to be here. And of course, my baby girl, she don't want me to talk about her, but it's already, I got the mic. Amorous. Give it up for Amorous person in the house. I don't have many minutes, so let me, let me go for it, but I, I love her and I love Emmanuel. Listen, Emmanuel, this is a great moment. It's a great opportunity for you. I mess with the sleepers because when I was back in um, college, I went to a private school and I looked for, you can tell who the sleepers are because when they get in their seats, they start up early. They start getting comfortable, like, real immediately. And I used to be one, so I'm for y'all today because I want to, I think God has a word for you on today, and I hope it, hopefully it blesses you as well. But I'm here. I want everybody to say this with me. You can hit my slide. Everybody say, help me. Help me. Oh, y'all better help me out this morning. Everybody say, help me. help me. Let me go to the old school church. Look at your person next to you and say, hey, every once in a while, you might need a little help. Don't ask them for money or anything like that, but look at your other person next to you and say, every once in a while, and if you got a sleeper next to you, nudge the sleeper and say, you surely need a little help. I was struggling, really, really, I was struggling this morning because I always, listen, it's hard on us. I know you guys get a lot of dopes that come up here and talk to you. It's hard on us because we're always looking at opportunities to say something to you because it's simply as this. We might miss the mark sometime, but we think about you and we're like, what can we say as a preacher to help you in your situation? That maybe would be kind of life changing, if you will. And for me, I couldn't really think of anything that was very like just deep or so. But the only thing I really thought about for you at this time in your life, being in middle school or high school, we only have high school students in here or we have middle school students? If you're a middle school student, wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. There you go. And if you're a high school student, say, hey, hey. Okay, good. I got you. Middle school students in the back. But I thought about what I could say that can be very helpful. And the only thing I want to leave you with this in my short few minutes is don't be afraid. I don't care if you're in middle school or you're in high school to ask for help. That's simply what I'm going to talk to you today. I'm going to give you a scripture. Don't be afraid wherever you're at in your life. I can't, I can tell you about my story. I can tell you where I came from. I can tell you that I was poor. My dad was on drugs. I, I mean, you guys heard all kinds of stories, but I'm not going to really focus on that. What I want to focus on is don't matter who you are, if you were like me, poor, or where you're at in life, you're going to need some help sometime in your life. Can everybody say amen? Listen, I work for a school district. When I leave today, I speak to thousands of students every year. When I leave today, I'll be heading out to Edison High School. Um, then from there, I'll be going to Bullard High School um, and speaking. Then I'll end my day somewhere, probably at Sunnyside, speaking to students like you. And when I speak to students, I hear all kinds of stories. Like just the other day, a student came to me and said, Mr. Person, I'm depressed, right? I had another student said, Mr. Person, I'm at a point in my life, I think I want to commit suicide. I had another person say, man, I'm doing things that I shouldn't be doing, and I got caught up. And I had another dude, I couldn't believe he passed by me the other day um, in school, and I could smell, I don't know about you, but I could smell marijuana. I only could smell it not because I smoked it, but I just know what it smelled like. And this dude crossed by me real quick, and he, was smoke, he smelled so bad that I think I got a contact, my man. And he tried to tell me. I'm like, hey, man, you walking by, I can smell. He's like, oh, no, Mr. Person. 
I said, man, one, you got that cheap CK cologne on top of it, and I know what it is. He said, no, Mr. Person, and I finally got down to him. I said, hey, what's going on? He said, man, got a little drug problem. You know, I started off by drinking beer, right? Then started smoking marijuana. He said, Mr. Person, now the stuff that I'm diving into is like the real deal, right? And he came to me literally after I called him with tears in his eyes saying, hey, I just need a little help. Can everybody say, help me? And the reason why that's important, what I'm not surprised about is what I experience every day with schools. And if I was able to talk to you guys, I'll hear all kinds of stories here at Emmanuel. This is what surprised me. I want y'all to listen in because this is going to be the thrust of my message, right? Then I'm going to let my beautiful wife come up and sing. Iris Person is here, everybody. Say hi. That's my high school sweetheart. Yeah, thank you, my man. I met her when she was 15 years old. I'm not going to tell you the age that I'm going to just, just say that I caught a young one. And um, we been we met on the basketball court. She was a, a, the two guard, and I was like the point guard. And she's been with me ever since. She slipped me a note. What's your name? I'm telling you. Annie. She slipped me a note, and she was like, can I be your friend? I was like, of course. That was a joke. I mean, yeah, I said, of course. And we've been together ever since. But this is what I'm surprised about. What I'm surprised is about is that the students that I deal with, they say they don't need any help. They tell me things like, hey, I can handle this all by myself. Or this is famous, really famous for me, is they tell me stuff, and I've heard this many times from my son, I got this. Listen, in life... There will be some problems that are so big that you can't do it all by yourself. And y'all got parents talking to you, you got other people talking. Some things that you can, and this is when you know it's big. This is when you know it's big. Hit the next slide. This is when you know it's big. If you've been dealing with something a long time and it it never got better, that's an indication that you can't do it by yourself. And this is when you know it's real big. If you can't overcome it, and it's there and it's not going away, and you get up the next morning and you're still dealing with it again, there's an indication that you got a problem that's just a little bit bigger than what you can handle. And for you to say you got it, you're lying to yourself. There's been problems in my life, not only as your age, that I just finally got to the point where, man, I just can't deal with this all by myself. And I did that. I didn't say it as loud as you, you said it today. I said, I need some help. And in our story today, if you can, y'all, y'all probably heard the scripture before from the Syrophician woman. And I don't know if you recall this story very well, that she was a lady that needed some help. You can go to the next scripture. And the Bible says in our text, in Matthew 15, 21 to 28, if you get some time to read it, that the woman was like desperate. And the woman was desperate because her daughter had a demon, the Bible says. And I don't know if you in your life, and maybe you haven't because you haven't been around maybe that long, but there's some issues that you're like desperate about that you're like, hey man, I got to get some help right right now. This is what I'm dealing with. I can't wait. And she found herself seeking out Jesus and walked. I don't know how far she walked. Where did she go? I don't know how how long it took her, but she's like, my daughter has a demon and I need somebody to deliver my daughter from this. Right? I deal with students that say, I've been depressed so long, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I deal with students that tell me sometimes, I've been anxious and I'm having anxiety and I fake it in front of my friends. What's crazy about it, you can have people right next to you Right? And you've been dealing with it all by yourself. Man, I've been in my life where I have people right next to me. And I've been faking it. Right? All by yourself. But this woman found herself in a situation where she said, I got to get some help. So she found Jesus. Right? And the Bible talks about her. And I'm going to give you three points that I'm getting out here. Then my wife's going to sing that song for you that I think will help you out as you think about situations in your life. Because this is one thing I've discovered in life. I don't care who you are. 
you're going to have times where you need some assistance. Go ahead, go to the next slide, then I'm going I'm to hit a few. Go to the next one. Yeah, go to the next one. Three things I want to talk to you about. Everybody say three things that I think will help you as you talk about your help. If you look at the story of this lady, there's a few things that she did that really uh, got my interest. Number one, everybody say number one. Read this, y'all say it. That's the first thing. Stop faking it. It ain't going to help nobody. It sure ain't going to help you. Don't be afraid. You need some help. Many of you know my son. I will tell his story. I mean, he got, Darren got a Division I basketball scholarship right here out of Emmanuel. And I was just with him the other day at his apartment. It's dirty. I don't know what's going on when you get to college. And when he was here, Darren had a medical issue. He finally came to me. He said, Dad, man, I don't know why, man. I can't keep up with the dudes in basketball anymore. I don't know what's going on. If you know Darren, Darren tell me the same thing every time. I got it, Dad. I don't need no problem. But this time he came to me and said, Dad, I need a little help this time. I don't know what's going on. I'm tired or whatever. I said, D, you'll be all right, man. We got to go, man. Let's go practice. Let's get some hoop, some shots up. He came to me again and said, Dad, I'm serious, man. I don't know, really know. And when he tells me twice, I said, something's going on. I said, let's go to the doctor. We went to the doctor. Darren had a blood condition for the last few years. We didn't even know about it. That made him so tired that they pretty much said he should be in the hospital. But this is the key. Don't be embarrassed when you need some help. Can you all say amen? Point number two. Hit the slide. Hit me more time. I read this. You guys, go ahead. This is what I discovered. When you get into situations in life, you can get some people that doubt you and some people that we call them haters. And when you make a decision to get better in life, you'll find out who your friends are because they're going to either hate or doubt. Listen, this is what I discovered. When I got saved when I was 17 years old, came to my boys at school, and I said, man, I want to do life differently. I don't want to do what you guys are doing. I don't want to drink and smoke. I don't want to have sex before marriage. I want to do something differently. And you know what my boys told me? You thought they would encourage me to say, D, do your thing. They're like, man, you're going to die, man. You ain't going to know where you're going to live like that. One of my closest friends. When you decide to be different, you'll find people that will start hating on you and start pulling you down. Where my man Jeffries? You still up? Here we go. I see you. You're smiling. We, we, this is a good day. Come on, put your hands together for my man. We 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 doing good, man. We <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> we doing good, man. We doing good. Don't be surprised when people don't don't hate you. And that's okay. People are human. They get uncomfortable when you try to be different. I'm not talking about them. Your friends will feel a little different when you start seeking out help because misery likes company. Point number three. Everybody say point number three. Last one. Say say that. Listen, in life, you might help, anybody, help a lot of people. Some of you are like counselors. Y'all talk to your friends. Y'all get on the phone. Y'all counsel them. When a man broke up with them, you say, baby, it'll be all right. Get you another one. And then when, you know, when, you know it's different things y'all talk about. It's all right. You just keep your head up. It'll be all right. It's more efficient to see whatever it is, right? Y'all counsel people. But what about you? What about you? It's okay. The woman had a need for her family. So she went out seeking for Jesus. There'll be times where you got to focus on you and there's nothing wrong for you seeking out God and saying, God, I need your help. I need you to change my life. Right? I get a chance to minister to people all, every one, all over, but every once in a while, I was like, God, I need your help. There's been times where I've been anxious. There's been times that I've been depressed. And I had to go to God and say, God, I need you to help me. Right? Hit that next slide. This is a good little cartoon that I, I, I found as I get ready to close. Is that you look at this little illustration. And this is like, I think it's just a reflection of who we are. You look over, this is a library, right? And it's showing all these people that are reading books about fixing others. And you have this one guy over here reading this book about helping himself. I want you to remember how can you help other folks if you're not healthy? And it's all right for you to go to God and say, God, I want to be healthy. I want to be right so that you can impact the world. I've been able to travel and speak and talk to people 
But God did something in me. And listen, I ask God for everything. And this is what I've discovered. Look to the person that's next to you real quick. When you're asking for help, I, I, I can honestly say, as my wife gets ready to come up, is that I've never heard the Lord vo- voice audibly in my life. I've been saved since I'm 17. I've never had this miraculous experience where God showed up to me in a way like a burning bush or anything when I needed help. Because there have been times in my life that I really just didn't think I was going to make it. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but mentally where I was like, I'm not sure if I'm okay. But one thing I discovered, I told you to look at the person that's next to you because God put people around you to help you. And some of the craziest things, and it's not even people that you would think that would be. And some of you got good friends in this room. Some of you have people in Emmanuel. God doesn't have you here, listen, Emmanuel, by accident. I don't know where, where you would be if you wasn't here. And sometimes in the moment you're like, I'm going through chapel, I'm going through experience. But God got these people around you to help you. And if you need some help, if you need people to minister, your friends, some people that you can talk to, God put them around you. My lowest moments has been because of God put people around me to lift me up. My wife is one of those. And she remembered not too long ago, I was so anxious and down out of it. And she looked in my eyes. She said, Darren, it seems like something's going on with you. And I went to the Lord through prayer. But she put pe- people like her in my life to help me. And there's people all around this room to help you. I love you, Emmanuel. Come on, baby. Won't you come and sing?